Hi everyone and welcome to part three of the 40k Cardi Cal. I hope you are enjoying it so far. For part three we are going to be using again the exact same hook size as we have been using for the previous parts and we are also going to need some yarn. Now if you're doing the six color option you are going to want to use color number three which for me is the duckling in the dirty DK. If you're doing the two color option you will want to use color number one and of course if you are doing the one color option you are just going to use color number one. So before we get started, I just want to remind you all that you will need to refer to the written pattern to get the correct stitch counts and row counts for your size. So now to get started, we're just going to start with a slip knot. And now we want to complete our foundation chain. So nice and easy. We're just going to chain up as many stitches as the pattern calls for in our chosen size. Okay, once you've completed your foundation chain, we want to complete a double crochet in the fourth chain from our hook. So skipping those first three chains, so one, two, three, finding the fourth chain from our hook and completing a double crochet. So now what we want to do is complete one double crochet in every stitch until the end of the row. Once you've completed row one, you just want to chain one, turn your work, and we're now going to be completing one single crochet in every stitch all the way until the end of the row. So once you've reached the end of row two, you want to chain three. And just like in part two, these two rows were the setup rows for our stitch pattern. So working in that exact same sequence, we want to find that second double crochet and we're yarning over and going in with an extended front post double crochet. Just like that. Now we're going to complete a normal double crochet. And repeating that sequence all the way until the end of the row. Okay, here I am at the end of row three. I'm now chaining one and turning my work. And as I'm sure you've guessed, we are now going to be completing one row of single crochet. So just one single crochet in every stitch all the way until the end of the row. Here I am at the end of that row and now I am chaining three, turning my work and we're going to continue working in that stitch pattern. So for this row we want to start with a normal double crochet because we are alternating remember I'm sure you're experts at this stitch pattern now but just as a reminder so we want to complete one double crochet first up and then we want to go in and around that next double crochet with an extended front post double crochet and just repeating that stitch pattern all the way until the end of the row. So here I am at the end of row five. Now what we're going to do is repeat that stitch pattern until we have completed the amount of rows relevant to the size we're making. Again, referring to the written pattern for those row counts. Okay, so here I am at the end of my solid section. So the section before we start the decrease rows. This is the wrong side of my work, obviously. So now I'm just gonna chain three and turn my work. And now we're going to be starting our decrease rows, but instead of decreasing at the start of the row, this time we're gonna be decreasing at the ends of the rows. And this is because obviously with this stitch pattern, it's got a wrong side and a right side. So we wanna make sure that the tapering in is now on the opposite side to our previous piece because we wanna have that tapering in going along this way, okay? So all we're gonna do is continue with the stitch pattern until we have three stitches remaining at the end of the row. So working 
the exact same stitch pattern as we have been. So just alternating between the normal double crochet and the extended front post double crochet. And just continuing that until we only have three stitches remaining. Okay, so here I am with just three stitches remaining. So now what we're gonna do is decrease and the decrease will work exactly the same as what we have been doing on the previous panel. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that. So we're just gonna decrease just like that. And now we'll have one stitch remaining and all we're gonna do is crochet into that last stitch. The last stitch could also be an extended front post double crochet. It will just depend on your sequence and where you're up to in that sequence. So once we've done that, we're now just going to chain one and continue on as normal. So we're just going to complete our single crochet row. Here I am at the end of my single crochet row. So now I'm just chaining three, turning my work. And I'm gonna go ahead now and finish off the remainder of this panel. So just keep in mind, once again, you will need to refer to the written pattern for all your stitch counts and placements of your decreases. The placements for your decreases will be exactly the same as in part two. The only difference here is we are completing the decreases at the end of the row rather than at the beginning. So go ahead and finish off your panel and I will meet you back here for the end result. Okay, so here I am at the end of this panel. So it should pretty much look exactly the same as the panel we made in part two, but the only difference is obviously this tapering will be on the opposite side because this is what we want it to look like. And as I'm sure you can imagine, this is going to be the front of your cardigan. So look how bloody cute it's gonna look. So now what we wanna do is seam along the top of the shoulders here. There's a little bit less mystery from this point on because it's gonna start taking shape, which is obviously a good thing, but it takes the mystery out of it. But anyway, that's okay. So you wanna put one panel to the side for now. And we now wanna take the panel we made in part one, which is of course our back panel. Now we wanna have it right side facing up. So you want the beautiful textured side facing up and the smoother looking side facing down. Now, excuse my ends, which I still haven't sewn in. I'm gonna do that at the end, but this is what you wanna have. So again, right side facing up. So the beautiful textured side facing up. And then you're gonna take the panel we made in part two, which is this panel with the tapering on this side. And we're gonna flip this one over. So the smoother side is facing up and our beautiful textured side is facing in. So you want both textured sides to be touching each other. Okay, so right sides facing in and if you remember, we've got this long tail that we left when we fastened off this panel and now is when we're gonna be using it. We're gonna be using it to seam across the top of this shoulder. I should have also mentioned that on this panel from part three, I have also left a long tail for seaming and this of course will be seamed on the other side. Okay, so you wanna leave a nice long tail. Once you've got these two panels laying right sides together, we're then going to take this long end and we're gonna use this to seam across the top of our shoulder here. So we're just gonna be using the slip stitch for this step. Now, because we do have the exact same stitch count on our front panel as we do on our shoulder section of our back panel, all our stitches should line up nice and evenly, making it really easy to seam and keep track of where we're up to. Okay, so I've just inserted my hook through both ends there and I'm just going to yarn over and pull through just to draw up a loop on my hook. And then I'm just gonna chain one just to make that nice and secure at the end. Then all I'm gonna do is find that next stitch on both panels 
and slip stitching to join just like that. So I'll show you again. So finding that next stitch on that front panel, then finding the matching stitch on the back panel, yarning over and slip stitching to join. Really nice and easy. We're just going to continue that all the way along until we have slip stitched through every stitch and joined both panels together. Okay, so here I am at the end. I have just completed my last slip stitch. So now what I can do is pull that end through and fasten off. Just like that. And you should now be able to see that you've got a beautiful, neat seam. And if we flip this right side out, you'll see that the seam is stunning. So neat, so tidy, so clean, professional looking. Love it. I love this method of joining. So we're now going to repeat that exact same step, but on this shoulder with our second front panel. So again, laying our back panel so it's right side up and taking our front panel and placing it right side down so right sides together and again we're taking our crochet hook inserting through those ends there pulling up a loop chaining one and then we will just continue doing exactly what we did on the first shoulder on this shoulder so slip stitching through both panels to join. Okay, so here I am at the end of shoulder number two. I have already fastened off. As you can see, it's a beautiful, neat seam. So now if we flip this right side out, you'll be able to see that we've got two beautiful shoulder seams and our cardigan is starting to take shape. Our next step is going to be to seam down the sides of our cardigan now. And obviously we're gonna be leaving an armhole here for our sleeve. And then we're gonna be seaming down the sides. So what you wanna do first is grab some yarn. I'm going to be using the flamingo color to do my side seam and then I'll be using the duckling color to do this side. No reason in particular, you could use the same color you used for your back panel, it doesn't really matter. Um, I just thought I would keep it consistent with the color I used for my shoulder seam, but you can definitely use whatever color you like. So for this step, we wanna be working along this way. So from the bottom upwards. Now, you will need to refer to the written pattern for more direction on your sleeve depth. But all you'll need to do is take your tape measure and using the instructions in the written pattern, you will measure out your sleeve depth. Once you've got your measurement, you're going to take a stitch marker and you're going to place it through both panels to hold them together just like that. So now you've got the space for your sleeve and then we know that this is the section we need to seam at the side of our cardigan. Now I'm just taking my crochet hook, the same one I've been using for this entire pattern and my flamingo colored yarn, which is the color of my front panel. Again, you can use whatever color you like. I'm just starting off with a slip knot and popping that onto my hook. And now using the exact same method as we used for our shoulder seams, I'm gonna be joining the sides. So placing my hook through that corner there and then through the corner on the back panel, I'm gonna pull up a loop and chain one, and now I'm ready to join. Now, the only difference with joining the side of your cardigan is we won't be working through actual stitches. You're just gonna be working through the sides of the rows, so the ends of the rows from the back and the front section, but the technique works exactly the same. The main thing is just to make sure that your stitches are spaced nice and evenly because we don't wanna have holes in the side of our cardigan, obviously. But other than that, you can just go ahead and begin slip stitching through both panels to join until you reach your stitch marker. 
Here I am at my stitch marker. So now what I'm going to do is fasten this end off. Just like that. You can remove your stitch marker now, totally up to you, but we won't be needing that anymore. And if you flip it right side out, you'll see that once again, we've got a beautiful, neat seam. So we are now just going to repeat that exact same process on the other side, of course, marking out your sleeve depth, placing your stitch marker, and then we'll be starting from this end and seaming up until we get to that stitch marker. Okay, I'm gonna do that off camera because I'm not gonna show you again. I know you've just seen it. So go ahead and do that and I will join you back here. All right, so once you've finished seaming both sides of your cardigan, you should have something that looks like this. Obviously this is the wrong side, so I'm gonna flip it right side out. And this is what you should have so far. So we've got our sides that are seamed together. We've got our shoulders seamed together. We've got a hole for our arms. Things are starting to take shape, but that concludes part three. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you are enjoying it so far. Hopefully if you've made it this far in the cowl, that means you are enjoying it. If you haven't already, please don't forget to join the Talk Yarny To Me Facebook group. The link is in the description of this video. We have a specific cowl group chat going on in there. So it's a great place to hang out if you are just wanting some pattern support or if you're wanting to share your progress. I absolutely love seeing all your posts in there and joining in the chat. So please, please, please join if you haven't already. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do that as well. Turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all my future videos. But until next time, guys, I will see you in part four. I cannot wait. We're almost there, sort of. I'd say we're probably about halfway, maybe just over halfway now. So that's very exciting. I can't wait to see you there. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.